Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop. Today is March 10th, and I'm going to start working on the uh, old capacitors that are under this uh, radio. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you a chart. I'm not going to comment very much on it. I'm just going to show you a couple of images just so you're aware of these charts. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I think it's important information. I like to share it with uh, friends, family, and anyone else who cares to look at it. Um, so here we go. So this, this chart we're looking at, if you, if you look at the bottom right here, Imperial College COVID-19 Response Team. That's the British COVID-19 Response Team. They produced this chart sometime in mid-March or earlier March, somewhere around there. And what this chart showed, if you look at the black line, Great Britain, total of 510,000 people killed by, I would make that to be the end of April, two weeks from now. And the blue chart shows a, a slightly later peak. Don't be fooled by the difference in the size. It represents 2.2 million Americans dead. And I'm, I'm sorry, did I say by the peak? We're all making this peak mistake where we think the peak means more than it does. By here, by August. By late August, you'd have these numbers of people dead. And this is only directly killed by COVID, not killed by all the other horrible things that would happen in these nations, in all nations, if this was just allowed to run, run free. This is the chart that caused the British and American governments to change tact completely. And immediately after seeing this chart, they both began pushing for, uh, you know, stay-at-home orders and stuff like that. This is not the chart I really want to show you, though, but this is the motivator mid-March for the U.S. and for Britain. Scary. But here's another chart. We need to look at this chart very, very carefully. I said I wouldn't say much, but I'm going to. So this is what would happen if we did nothing. We'd have that huge peak, doesn't matter what country you're in, with an overwhelming number of people passing away. See this red line? That's the capacity of the healthcare to deal, healthcare systems to deal with this. It's nothing. Nothing. But here's the part that's really important to realize. If we do all this suppression, suppressing, suppressing activity, which is going on all over the world now, except in Sweden, I think. Sweet Sweden's doing something a little different. If we do that, we can knock this down to almost nothing if it were 100%. But look what's coming in November. Look at these lines. So this brown one is case isolation, household quarantine, and general social distancing, which is what we're doing right now. Look where it's going. Look where it's going. So uh, you can take a look at this if you like uh, yourself. I think you can see the uh, web, the website up here. Uh, Weforum.org. I don't know about the veracity of these. They look perfectly fine to me. They look all oh, looks real to me. So that's the opening part. So what, you know, if you're not getting it, let me tell you. November is when big problems happen in the world again. So there's one more chart to look at. Sorry about this. I know you want to look at a radio being fixed and not this. But this is really important for us to accept. To accept that. This is what's happening now. And this is our future. All over the world. Like that. So we won't look at that any longer. You can study it more if you like again, because you can look at this website. We really want to look at radios, not at that stuff. Okay, now having charged you up with concerns, I'm going to try to uh, distract us all, especially me, as we work on this radio. So uh, I think I'm going to start by playing it very carefully and listening to it carefully and trying to identify any, any functional things that I can pick up about it before we start trying to fix it up. And I gotta wonder whether I should go through all these tubes and test all the tubes too before we get into all those capacitors. Oh, well, let's play it. Let's play the radio. Now, I think lots of people would share my opinion about the quality of Zenith equipment, that the, the quality is very, very high. So I'm really hopeful to produce a really nice radio here once it's all fixed up. So, chassis check.
There's a slight, a slight difference there. Not much. Okay, so I think I'm checking when I do that. I think what I'm doing, and bear in mind, this, this is a hot chassis radio, and I've got it plugged into an isolation transformer, so if you're in your home in your sock feet with exactly the same radio and you're about to do that, don't do that. Read about hot chassis. So I happen to have my shop set up, so I know what I'm doing in terms of safety, at least enough for me to carry on. Now, this just went quiet. Oh, this just... Boy, that's a lesson in uh, tube contacts here. Boy, oh boy. The radio appears to have gotten generally quieter, especially when I did this tube. It seems to be coming up a little bit. Okay, tune. Weren't we listening <coughs> to a station here when I first turned it on? two strings on this radio I just noticed. <clears throat> One string driving the pointer and the other string driving the drum here. You can hear that deep bass response even with that out of the cabinet. That's pretty good, just like that. That's pretty good reception. <clears throat> it really is. So how much better can it really get from there? Good question, because uh, some of those capacitors just look horrible underneath this radio. Well, so I really couldn't detect anything, you know, significantly out of sorts with this radio. Just now. easiest radio to kind of prop up here and work on. Well, let's just... So what do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six uh, wax capacitors in there. And that's, that's really it. I think they're all going to come out. So here's the one that's going to the chassis. Appeared to be okay. And here's the one that just looks totally egregious. You know, this one, I believe, is right across the power line. I, I'm going to guess. 
Wow, isn't that ugly? Okay, regardless of the level of beauty in there, I'm going to start changing those out. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so I've done three capacitors. They're all have a common uh, terminal here, so I kind of forced me into doing all three at once. This is the first one, the second one, and this this rather horrible looking. Look at this thing. Ooh, yo, 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 yo. And there's some wax in the uh, in the cabinet on the bottom. It's got to have come from this guy. Let's take a look at what this guy was doing first, and we'll look at these two too. But let's look at what this guy was up to. He's hooked from. from this terminal on the rectifier tube to what I'm pretty sure is a B minus point there. Okay, let's look at the schematic. Okay, so so the capacitors that I just changed, the three of them, are right in here, right in this area here. The one we were just looking at that looks like it's melted is this one right here, 0.05 um, right to the B minus trying to decide if this has full the full voltage across it. Well, that's where that one was anyway. And then the other two are these two. So this is the connector to the chassis or the capacitor that drains the chassis into the B minus line. This is B minus here. And this one's doing something extremely similar. It's not really draining, but you gotta make a connection. Like this is the phono plug on the back of this set. So you have to make a connection to B minus. And if you did it with a straight piece of wire this connector would become very very dangerous so you put a capacitor in there to uh, block the danger that's how I would that's what I believe this capacitor is doing um, so basically in the radio this capacitor has been sitting and doing nothing and this one is not doing a hard job at all this guy working kind of hard Let's test these three capacitors, and we'll start with this guy who is working so hard. At least, I think it was working hard. It sure looks like it, doesn't it? Looks to be in terrible shape. And the whole end of it is is has come out. It's just it's literally coming apart. This is one of the worst looking capacitors I've come across. So the first test will be to apply a DC voltage, 50 volts in fact, across the capacitor. Then we'll see how much current leaks through it. A good capacitor, zero current. There's, first there's a charge current, and then it just goes down to nothing. If there's no current, the eye here will be open like this. Even a slight current leaking through the capacitor will cause the eye to close. Here we go. Charging up, charging up, but leaking a fair bit. So most of the capacitors I test that come out of old radios can sustain 50 volts fairly well. Not all. I'm sure if we put this at 150 now you'll see the eye won't even uh, open. It's not going to open. So as far as capacitors go, this is definitely bad. I mean, I'd be crazy to think anything otherwise. Next one we'll look at, these are all the same size, these are all 0 0.05. So this is the one that's protecting the uh, phono plug at the back. Fifty volts. Right open. One fifty. Um it's not open all the way. Two fifty. Still opening a bit. Now look at it, it looks much better. It looks good actually, it looks quite good. Still has got still has degraded. Almost certainly from moisture penetrating penetrating it. So this now this is the guy who was uh, draining the chassis and from my finger test earlier it seemed to be draining it pretty good. Let's find out. <laughs> mm, okay, well, it's coming open really slowly. 
And I'm sure 150, we're not going to see it come open at all. Not the worst capacitors in the world. Well, the, this one might be. Not the worst, but. Okay, so that kind of explains why the radio was working. Now we're going to find out if it's still working. After doing those three capacitors there, do I need to do anything with this radio? Can I just turn it on like this? Just leave it like this? I think so. Switch is on. Okay, watching in a dim light because I did replace a bunch of parts. Good. All operation is normal. Well, we'll find out. Now, is this going to make this radio sound better? Hard to make a radio that sounds good sound better. Got the antenna laying down here. It's totally inappropriate for receiving stations, I just realized. But let's see what we can get. Right up in here. Well. Doesn't want to pick anything up. Sounds good though. In my noise free shop. See, there's no noise in here anymore. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> uh, okay, I really want to convince myself that this is working. Um, I don't like picking up a live chat. I just don't like doing that. Even though it should be safe. I must have bumped the pointer a bit. Well, okay. That was enough to see it was working. I see the antenna wires come off. That's enough for that. Still working. Good. Now there's a few more capacitors in here to, to deal with. Three more. The one down here, way at this end. This is the front end of the radio. And down here towards the audio end of the radio. Um, I'm going to do these two audio ones, and then we'll check check the radio's operation. I assume these are audio-related capacitors, and then we'll do that one last. We'll see what happens. Okay, I've got those two capacitors done. There's one down here and one here. That leaves just this one uh, paper wax one. Here's the two I took out. 0.01 and a point, point oh 0.05. So this one is across the output, the primary side of the output uh, transformer. 0.01. And this one is conveying the audio from the volume control slider. Let's check these guys. Out. So first one is the uh, volume control. So this is blocking AVC voltage from carrying on to the grid of the triode. .05. Okay, what can you do with 50 volts? You can just do fine with 50 volts. Not so fine with 150. Very typical of a capacitor of this age. Not terrible but not perfect. Well, this guy's trying to block some voltage from a grid. It's and this one, this one goes across the output transformer. I think 
it's to allow any RF to pass around the transformer, but I frankly I don't know. I see these in all the radios and I just haven't picked up on exactly why it's there. 0.01, 50 volts. And it's not open all the way. 150 probably won't open. Same sort of condition. Worth replacing. Probably still functional to the, to, the, to a great degree. In certain locations, this capacitor would be fine. In other locations, this would be a problem. In the location it's in, I bet you that was really quite fly. So, um, is it worth testing the radio? Yes, because if I don't, I will end up in a jackpot here, which I don't care to be in today. What a mess. Get my antenna connected there. I'm just going to use a clip lead. All we're doing is making sure the radio is working. We're not, we're not interested in really how well it's working. Not yet. Well, always interested in that, but so not the best arrangement. Big long wire there. Good enough though. Dim bulb fine. So, um, you know, maybe a little more volume with this now than there was. Maybe. Um, so the volume's turned right down to nothing right now. station there. <laughs> the other end of the wire came off. Okay. Uh, that was enough of a test to see that it's working. Now the last capacitor, that guy, what's he doing? Uh, it's hooked, hooked, looks like it's hooked up to the, well it's either oscillator or oscillator, I don't know which coil is which just now. At a glance, it would look like, uh, I can't be sure. So let's look on the schematic, we'll try to find this capacitor. It is a, it is a 0 0.05. Lots of 0 0.05s in this radio. 0 0.05 up, up around the front end. Let's go find it. 0 0.05 up around here. That guy. That guy. Um, it goes to the B minus. So I'm looking in the radio now. And you know what? I think it goes to the B minus. And it comes from a uh, coil a coil terminal. Um, you could say it's connected directly to a coil terminal. So th this could be it here. More or less like that. So I think that's what we're doing. So that's a capacitor between between the AVC and the B minus. This is the AVC capacitor. I'm not absolutely sure about that. Um, interestingly enough, it connects to a wire that appears to connect to the yeah yeah. You see how they've shown this. Um, hmm. This is actually the uh, tuning capacitor. So one side of this is the frame, and the wire, the capacitor is connected to the frame, and there would be right up here to the frame of the capacitor. So for sure, that's what this is. A 0.05. Uh, it's the only one I haven't replaced. <laughs> I think we can be pretty sure that's what it is. So I would call that the AVC capacitor. 
whose job is to damp variations in the AVC. Could also in the AVC voltage. I mean, it could it could also be just another way to uh, get rid of any RF that might be in there. I don't think that's its particular job. Maybe it is coming from here, coming along. There's no other capacitor doing that. Yeah, maybe it serves two purposes. Okay. No problem changing it though. Okay, that completes the capacitor replacement. Here's the last guy to come out, 0 0.05. Let's give him a shot on the rack. Put him on the rack. Let's stretch him out. See what he has to say. 50 volts. Good. 150. Surprisingly, not so good. Surprisingly, because it looked pretty good at 50 volts. So there we are. There's the dead soldiers that have come from this radio. That's from the other, another radio previous. Get this guy another test. Where did that wire come from? Hmm. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I think it was from here. I think you'd see the broken, the broken end of the wire. I think I would, but I don't. That's kind of odd. Okay, we're going to guess this one. Okay. Power on. Dim bulb in view. Here we go. Doesn't seem to be as strong as it was. Uh, longer wires here. Yeah, it seems to have gone downhill a little bit. Let's bring in the helper. Not much help from the helper.
could ever need, and nobody could understand, and I certainly couldn't understand why that was the the item of choice that people thought they were going to need for this siege that they were going to have to undergo. And, and of course, it hasn't become a siege. Yes, a lot of us are holed up in our uh, personal space, our apartments, our houses, and so forth. But uh, if you pick up the phone, you can get uh, onto any one of about 20 delivery services, and they all have toilet paper, and they all have hand towels and all the rest of it. At least so far, they do, and I think they will continue to. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's talking about the run on toilet paper that happened in Canada. I don't know about other countries in the world, but as soon as, as soon as things looked like some kind of a shutdown was coming or whatever, people panicked and bought toilet paper like crazy. Seriously. And Canada? Canada's not going to run out of paper. That'll never happen. So, so it was really quite a mystery. Uh, it's a, clearly a sociological uh, thing. Uh, people uh, panicking and feel they have to do something. They don't know what to do. People are buying toilet paper. Hey, I'm going to buy it too. And it's a run on the toilet paper. <laughs> I even, we, my wife and I even felt the same forces ourselves, although we resisted. And we did not stock up uh, crazily on toilet paper. <laughs> so, okay, situation with the radio here is uh, it seems to be working pretty good uh, not quite as good as I kinda expected but maybe it just needs an alignment to kinda get everything back in shape on it and I uh, still haven't tested the tubes maybe perhaps there's a weak tube in there too so I think the next thing is we'll do an alignment see what the radio really can do and probably probably test the tubes that's probably what's next for it and then you know it could be done it could be done at that point Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope your day goes well. And hopefully I'll be in here again tomorrow morning working some more on this radio. Thanks a lot for watching.